It's been there literally the entire time you've been here. I use it. Okay, great. So, uh, not enough talk about the mic. Um, let's take a look at this challenge. So, you got some horses. Uh, uh, release zero says dynamically load a form. Uh, update the page after submitting the form, dynamically load the details about the horse and uh, something about making graceful degradation, uh, which is essentially saying that we need to ensure that none of the JavaScript we break uh, write, none of the JavaScript we break, well, that could also be the case. Uh, none of the JavaScript we write breaks the uh, non-JavaScript functionality of the site. And that's always really important. You should always write your sites as if uh, you, you, you can run them and have full functionality with no JavaScript. Because there's tons of people out there on the internet that just roll around with no JavaScript turned on because security reasons. Uh, and you want them to be able to use your site as well. So, uh, okay. So, taking a look at the code, let's open this up. And uh, what do we got? We got an app, JS, uh, which just has the document ready. And we got, um, there's an index that just, this is like the home page redirect to horses. So then the horses is sort of our, looks like this is really our home route. So we've got a horses index here. We've got a horses new, a post to horses, and a uh, horses uh, show. Cool? And I got some coffee, yay. Hmm. Uh, so let's, let's spin up the server. Um, ugh. No, I couldn't drop it because I hadn't bundled yet. It's got to bundle all the stuff. So we'll go back over here and continue looking at the code. While that's going. So we've got an index page. This is the page we see right off the bat. What's it got on it? It's got this uh, title and then uh, a UL with a class of list. Iterate over all of our horses. Uh, an LI that contains an anchor tag with, uh, uh, it's just like a link to that particular horse's show. And then uh, that's it for the iteration. Then down here at the bottom there's a form. Uh, that's a get to horses new with just a button. So there's no data on this form or anything like that. Like it, it's literally uh, just a long-handed link essentially, right? As that's all it's doing is a get request to the specific route. Uh, and that's it on the index. Uh, the other view we have is a horse show and a horse new. Yeah, so the horse new, it's got some errors, and then, okay, there's a big form here that goes to the post to horses, ugh, post to horses, and a bunch of inputs on the various horse things. All right, and the show has, uh, yeah, a big title for the horse's name, and then uh, some horse details. So those are the views and the controllers that we have so far. Anybody, any questions about the markup as it stands? No, all good, great, terrific, yay. All right, so the first thing I like to do in any application is ensure that the application applicates. Um, so let's console log like JS running and let's, let's get this party started. Come on, you can do it. Almost there. I believe in you. Really? It's gonna happen. Oh, I can't. Database removal error. Database does not, well, yeah. Migrate. Did I spell it wrong?
Cool. So here's our site. Got our horses. And uh, let's go ahead and get our inspection panel up. I like keeping it as a separate window, so I'll like put this window over here and this window over here. And oh no, a big red text in the place where errors are generally displayed um, near the console, right? And the big red text is undefined method jQuery. It's not defined, so we need to make that happen. Uh, you cannot use the tool if the tool is not available to you. So we generally. Um, We'll do all of our include statements in the layout file. That way, every page throughout the entire site will have access to them. And yeah, no jQuery here. So let's go get it from the internet. jQuery CDN, Content Delivery Network. There's several ways to include jQuery in your code. You might include it via a gem. You might download jQuery itself and physically include the, the code into your project and then link that code in your layout. Uh, or you might use a CDN, which is a link to someone else's code on the internet. CDN's typically the, the easiest way, uh, but it comes with the definitive drawback of that you are like linking your site's uptime and reliability, uh, and load time for that matter, to someone else's network. So like if the CDN goes down for some reason, guess what? You no longer have jQuery. Uh, so I just went to the CDN, I, I chose the minified version and uh, just grabbed the script, script tag. And yeah, I need to put it in here. If I put it in, uh, just, you know, I'll put it in here underneath this other JavaScript and I'll remove the new line characters because I think that's bullshit. And there we go. So now it's all on one, you know, it's all contained on line 12. And let's go reload. Yeah, it won't work. Uh, well, I'm aware that it won't work. <laughs> I want everyone else to see that it won't work. Yeah, still no go, right? So code, as we've learned over time, uh, is, is put together from the top of the page to the bottom, right? So when we're, when we're inside this JavaScript tag, this JavaScript tag looks for some JavaScript that already exists in the universe that has that dollar sign defined. It doesn't find it, hence the big red go f get fucked error. Uh, so you know we merely need to make sure that just like with everything else that we do, that we have a dependency within application JS to have jQuery defined. That dependency needs to be defined before we can make use of it. Yes, Lorraine. If you were going to actually download the file and include the file in your folder, mm -hmm. where would it be necessary to include it? And could you just leave it as the script or do you have to do an additional script source to tell it where to look I get uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, let's go back to J. Let's go jQuery. Well, can I from here? Can I just download it? Well, here, tell you what we'll do. Oh, damn it, drats. Uh, it's not a time suck. Ah, oh, still, oh, well, damn it. jQuery. Download jQuery. Download, yeah, production, whatever, great, awesome. Show and finder. Uh, jQuery min.js, open with sublime. Hey, hey copy. And then uh, let's let's come back over here to our app and let's so here we are in our app right and I'm gonna touch app uh, Java where is it where is it uh, it's in public in a Sinatra application public JavaScript jQuery DL dot JS I just called it DL for shits and giggles uh, so that it would be different yeah download right and close this out come back to our app jQuery. I put it in public JavaScript because that's where we put all our that's where all our JavaScript files go. Perfect. Yeah. So now I've just pasted it in here. I'm going to save that up. I'm going to come back to my layout, and yeah, you're right. Fuck the CDN. We don't want to be dependent on someone else's bullshit. We'll just bring it down ourselves. That's right. So uh, we're just going to go to that uh, 
and jQuery, J-Q-U-E-R-Y underscore DL. And let's try that on for size. Close, close, refresh. Ugh, B shotgun, shoddy, shoddy gun. And we're all good. So it's not a rabbit hole. That's that's just that's it. Open up the JavaScript folder, slap some JavaScript in there, require that JavaScript, move on with your life. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, order totally matters. So you know if you if you're using jQuery and something, it's got to be pulled in ahead of time. Everybody good on that? Great. Moving on. Uh, let's go ahead and commit though. Uh, I'm I'm gonna quit doing this. Here we go. Be shotgun. Pull this back up, and we'll just make a new tab. This is what I like to do. I like to have one tab for my server to run in, and another tab for my like commits. And then later in life, when you start using like advanced tools like Guard and Live Reload and shit like that, you'll have another tab for that. And then I'd probably have a fourth tab that's just running like specs, all in the same app that I'm working on. Because in a situation, you know, in real life, you're not working on 14 different challenges every day. You're working on one application, all day, every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna get s. I'm gonna get add dot, and I'm gonna get commit dash m. Um, like uh, include jQuery locally. Okay. So JS is running, we're good to go. Uh, and the first thing that needs to happen is we need to hit this button and instead of going off to this other page, horse's new question mark with this form on it, we need uh, to have the, the form come up on the page that we were on. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is establish an event handler on this button here to stop it from doing what it's doing in its natural course of things. And to instead, we'll get that information dynamically from the server and we'll append it to the page. So let's make that happen. Step number, oh, so many files. Let's close them out, too many already. And let's just pull up the ones that we need to like make our life successful as we move into this next portion. App.js and um, probably the horse's controller, I would imagine. Uh, so let's take a look at this element on the page. Let's inspect it. <coughs> All right, so the, it's a form, and it's a button. Uh, so we could really choose to listen to either one of these things, either the button or the form. Typically, we want to listen to forms uh, because forms get submitted, and they have like text boxes. You want to specifically listen to the form so that when someone like presses enter, instead of clicking the submit button, you still get it. Um, in this case, we really could go either way, but in order to sort of observe best practices with forms, I'm gonna make my event listener on the form. So this form has a class of flex and flex column. Um, I don't wanna attach a listener to either one of those things because those are both CSS related classes and they might show up in other places and, the, and I'm not guaranteed, I have, I have no guarantee then that this event handler that I'm writing won't then act upon some other piece of code out there in my application. You know, that like fuckhead Tom wrote last Tuesday without checking in with anybody. You, you know what I mean? So I'm the master of my own universe. I've created the earth, sea, the wind, and the fire. Like I can certainly add a class to a, uh, to a form. So let's head over to the index where that form lived. And we'll come here to form class. Um, you know what, I'm, I'm actually gonna add an ID. Uh, because it's the only one of these things that's ever going to exist on the page. So why not? Uh, ID new horse form button. I like descriptive ID and class names. Um, except I named it JavaScript style, which is terrible. New horse uh, form button. Cool. Uh, let's reload the page. We'll see that that's there. Yeah. New horse form button. Sweet. Uh, we'll close this out. We'll start writing some JavaScript around that. We know JavaScript's running. We toggle that off. And this will be our new horse form 
button, 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 listener as a function. I never write any JavaScript code in my document ready, ever, ever. I just don't do it. Uh, I mean, I, I get that I literally just, but you, you know what the fuck I mean. Um, always like with the function calls up here. That way the entirety of the application is very clean, it's modularized. Uh, all, you, know, you can look and see exactly what's happening and when at a very quick glance. So I, I really prefer this pattern. And I just come down here and I just make that thing. New horse form button listener equals a function which takes jack shit and does some stuff. Uh, jQuery select uh, hashtag new horse uh, form button. Yes, sir. Why do you want to set it up? Like, I think I might know the answer as I'm asking if this dawned on me, but um, doing the anonymous function versus a named function? Uh, I mean, there's no reason to name the function, really. Uh, I just need, I'm just assigning it to a variable so that I can then call that variable and execute it up here. Okay. Uh, six one way half dozen the other. I kind of figured that as I was asking, like, oh, well, there are, yeah. but then I continued to trace. Cool. Uh, jQuery select new horse form button on um, submit and another function another anonymous function which takes jack shit oh but it doesn't it takes an event which we'll call e let's e.prevent default right out of the gate um, and then let's console log uh, in new horse form listener. I always like to have this be my first line inside of an event handler. Uh, it tells me where I'm at since I'm in a name function, so that's another benefit of uh, or a, a variable alias function, sure. Um, and uh, it, you know, it also tells me that my handler, my event handler is working correctly. So the in is like a function? It, huh? Put in. Yeah, I did, it's a string, no, right? It's, it's we hear us mighty folk in the JS netherlands of some string shit that tells you, the developer, something about what is happening in your code. So, my God. Well, he's going to know. Joe, I think it's also nice. Oh God. Do I have to pass in what? The event into the function. If you want to prevent the default, you have to prevent the default of something. Uh, this anonymous function here receives as its first argument uh, the event from on, the event that happened. So if you want to prevent the default of the event, which 99.99% uh, of the time you do, uh, you've got to pass it in and then you make use of that uh, right in here. And it worked? Yes. Hmm. I kind of want to see that work. Well, let's confirm it works this way first. All right, so I click on add horse. It definitely works this way. Okay. We got some shit that tells us as a developer or something is going on with our code. And then if we turn this back on, turn this off, and refresh. And not pass, and not pass the E. I don't have to unpass the E. It still didn't do it. So that's crazy. What's up with that? James, any clues? How the fuck did the event.prevent default still work, given that I didn't pass in an event? How's this a thing? Hold on. I mean, event must be getting passed in on its own. Oh, you know what else I want to do here is I want to console log arguments. Yeah. 
Events totally there already, so you don't have to pass it in. That's amazing. And then the arguments, but there's no arguments. So it's just made available to you. Only if you, yeah, I think so. If you, what if we try to do E here? Nope, only if you name an event. So you get event for free. How about that? Learn something new every day. Right? Okay. Uh, so that's interesting. Learning indeed. So yeah, I guess we don't have to pass it in. Um, and you can use event for more than just preventing the default. Like it, it has all the information around the event contained within it. Um, generally though, we'll bind to the context of, of, of the event rather than the JavaScript event itself uh, because the context is, a, is an easier thing for us to manipulate and work with, right? Like it's very specifically when we say var uh, button Let's mean target equals jQuery this, right? We're, we're making this variable button target here, which is the current context of this function. The current context of this function is uh, the, the, the actual DOM element, that the jQuery DOM element now that the event occurred on. Um, if we look at the event, Oops, back. Ugh, refresh, fucker, come on. All right, so this is the this, the button target variable that we made, and it points to like, it's a jQuery object with a specific element inside of it, just one. The event, however, right, is this giant thing that's got tons of data on it. And there's lots of good stuff in here. You can totally pull out a lot of the things you need off of this event um, if you want to traverse it, right? It doesn't matter how you get the data uh, as long as you get it. I prefer going with the current context. So, all right, there we go. Uh, I've got my button now and I need to get the buttons um, eight, um, an attributes off the button, off the form rather, I need to get its, um, what, action? Var um, action equals, and that's really all I need. Uh, I could also grab the method off of it, but since it's a get, right, it's a get method, I don't need it. The default for Ajax is get, so if it's a get, I can just leave it off, mbd. Uh, and now I can construct my actual request. So var request equals dollar dot Ajax with an options hash. There we go. And uh, what all options? Well, I, I think we just need the one thing, the URL, like where we're going to in the universe. So URL comes to action. And now I can say request dot re q u e s t dot done is a function which takes a function. Um, that function receives three um, different inputs, but we're only going to make use of the first one, which is the response. And then we'll get in here and console log that puppy out. Response. Whoops. And I'm just going to duplicate this function and make it into my dot fail. I always want to have a dot fail and I'll just add in something that's like, you know, um, bomb says I'm special. Okay. And I need to put my, I'm putting this back up here at the top where it belongs and I'm going to remake it into what it was in. There we go. Uh, let's see what we got so far. So in the horse form, button listener, and then, okay, what do I get back? A lot of stuff. It's 
uh, it's a form with all the labels. So it's the form, it's the new route, but it's also the new route with the entire layout included. So, you know, sometimes you're using Ajax to get things from other people's websites uh, or servers, APIs, right? And it'll be formatted in a way that you can consume it. Here, it's not. Uh, and it's your responsibility because you own both the front end and the back end, so you've got to go modify the back end. So off we go to our horse controller. And this is, okay, it's the get to horses new, add horse, new horse, and then ERB, the horse is new. So that's the route it hit, that's what it got back right there. So we just need to take some action here. If request.xhr else, so if it's an Ajax request, we'll do something else, we'll do something else. Well, we're basically going to do the same thing. We're just going to say this one is going to be layout false. Let's take a look at that new horse show. Add a horse, errors, form. Yes, it's a bad time. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, well, let's just go with this. So now when I hit the button, come on, buddy. You can do it. What's going on? That's interesting. Okay, that's what I expected. Strange. So now it's giving me back just that, just that view without the layout. Yeah. Uh, let's. Um, that's what I actually want back from the controller. Uh, at least I think it is. So I'm going to come back from controller land back to my request dot done. And I'm going to throw in uh, debugger here. And let's figure out what we need to do with this thing. So um, what have we got access to inside of our dot done? We've got the button. Um, wasn't the, what do we call it? The button target. Ah, oh, fucker, except that we don't. Has anyone encountered this before, this specific error? Uh, I got it yesterday. Well, the uncaught reference error button target is not defined, but it is. We defined it right here. Right? And if I take debugger out and I instead console log button target and we rerun this, The button target is there. It's defined. It works out. Uh, this is a bug in debugger, which is total bullshit. Uh, so if you try to access a variable from a separate scope in debugger uh, without having first like made use of that variable inside the current scope somehow, debugger doesn't see it. It's undefined. So you get this uncalled reference error. It doesn't have that thing in the universe. Um, so, yeah, that's just a pro tip for you because that can be a real rabbit hole. But now that I've console logged it, if I do the thing again with the debugger in, I hit my debugger and it console logged the thing and now if I button target, it's there. I used it first, so now it's available in debugger specifically. It's weird, I don't know why, okay. Uh, so I can button target, and that's the that's this button here. I probably need to hide that fucker. Mahalo, it's gone. That's how I would do that. So let's grab this, and we tested it out in our debuggers. So now we throw it in, and then I probably need to append my response. I've got a response here, right? I probably need to append this response to the page somewhere. So where to append it to? Um, 
I could maybe I could maybe just say like the button target after, like right after this. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, either way. I think it doesn't really matter because it's dynamic content. We're going to be bringing it in and out. Ah! Button target is not defined. Damn it. Because you had like three T's and buttons. No, it's like seriously not there. Why not? I don't understand. Ah, when I made it, I put three T's in button because I'm a dumbass. There we go. Hashtag I fucked it up.